Hello, today's uh, lectures are all about design of feedback systems. Uh, so we're really just going to be focusing in on this standard block diagram setup for designing and understanding feedback systems. And what we're going to do is sort of drill into what all the various bits mean. Um, we'll introduce some common design objectives and we'll also try to understand how to design various bits of this feedback loop in order to meet those objectives. and if there are any fundamental limits that uh, might be preventing us from uh, meeting whatever objectives we like, that kind of thing. Um, so we're going to start off just by talking about this standard setup, explaining what all the various bits mean. Uh, so we've got some blocks and signals and we'll try and understand what they are and why this is, if you like, a, a sort of a standard framework for control system design. Um, and then we'll list out some design objectives and then in uh, a set of lectures to come, we'll then try and drill in to, uh, to each of these um, objectives and understand them a bit more deeply. Uh, so what's going on here? So we have a block diagram, um, and what are the various bits in here? Well, sort of the central object in all of this is this block that I've called P. And this is an input-output system, um, and this is the process that we wish to control. So the process has some inputs that we're free to choose. Imagine this was a car again, so if we're driving the car, we're free to determine how much we push on the pedal. Um, and it's also got some outputs of interest. And these are the things that we want to control with our control system. So maybe in the car case, it might be you might want to control the distance to the vehicle in front or the speed of the car, this kind of thing. So typically, um, you would have a long list of design objectives and you try and catch, uh, capture those all through a, a signal each or maybe more than one signal for particular objectives. Um, so, so normally you would have a vector of outputs of interest, uh, but for simplicity we're just assuming we only have one objective um, and that's what is captured by this signal here. Y is uh, commonly used and this is the output of the, the process. And we're going to try and do this uh, through feedback. And uh, so what does that mean? And how does that fit together? Uh, well, what we're going to do, we have this quantity that we're interested in, and we're going to take some measurement of it uh, with a sensor. So I don't know, maybe you've got a distance sensor on your car telling you how close to the car in front um, you are. And this measurement won't be perfect. It will be subject to some noise. So we then get this signal here. So this is our measurement. Um, so this is what we're able to observe uh, about the current state of our, or status of our process. And what we then do, uh, well, we put it through a minus one. Why do we put it through a minus one? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to compare it to some desired um, uh, value. So, and this is what's typically meant by the reference and you put your reference signal in over here typically and the objective is to make the output equal to the value that we want it to, uh, to, to follow. So maybe this is setting the distance um, to the car in front that we want or maybe this is setting the velocity that we want. And we'll talk about this in a second um, but what we're doing is we're comparing where we currently are to where we want to be, and we're taking the difference. So that's what this minus sign is doing. And this signal in here, this is typically termed uh, your error signal. And the idea is that it sort of tells you how close you are to your objective. If this is big, you're far from where you want to be. If this is zero, you're exactly where you want to be. And this is what we're going to be making, using to make our control decision. So we have this error. Uh, reflecting how far we are away from where we want to be and based on that we choose our input and this is sort of the typical this is the controller that we're going to be focusing in on um, throughout this lecture and so this determines how we should pick our inputs based on how close we are to our objectives um, and just to finish off the various other labels on here um, it's also typical to introduce some other signal D here, and this is re re uh, reflecting some disturbances to the process. So th there's some external effects that are knocking our uh, process around. So maybe it 
severe wind, uh, if it's a car or um, different types of road conditions, this type of thing. So you, you might have some other disturbances that are acting on what's going on here. And ideally, we want to um, be able to reduce the effects of these of these disturbances. So this is sort of the standard setup. We, we've not said what this um, F is. This is a, a feed forward um, controller. We're not actually going to be talking about that. Um, we'll indicate what it's typically used for. Um, but it's, it's an important part of control system design. It's not a part we're going to really be talking about today. So this is the standard feedback control setup and what everything means. And um, let's now just sort of, we've already started to talk about it, but let's just list out some of the common design objectives. So our first design objective A, um, we want to uh, reduce the effect of load disturbances. Load, uh, yeah, let's just keep going. Disturbances. So this is our, our first uh, feedback objective. So we have these external disturbances that are affecting uh, the output of our process, and we want to remove the effect of these disturbances, D. Um, what else would we like to do? Um, we don't want to inject too much noise into the system. So, um, don't inject too much noise. And you can already perhaps start to realize that there's going to be um, sort of fundamental trade-offs involved in control system design. So the fact that we have this unwanted noise um, signal affecting things, this is a, a result of us using feedback. The choice to use feedback is necessarily introducing some noise, um, and this will have a negative effect on the performance of the system as well. So there's sort of there's going to be some balancing act going on here. We're introducing the controller to try and reduce the effect of these disturbances and also um, track various references. But it's, we've already identified that this comes at a cost. Um, our measurements are subject to noise, and these will have a detrimental effect on what's going on. Um, but hopefully we can design our control system in such a way that we're not injecting too much noise um, mess to messing up the behavior of the process. Um, C, uh, this is a very important one. Um, we want to make response insensitive. Insensitive. Uh, to um, changes in the process. The process, and we've sort of already touched on this in previous lectures, but um, processes are changing all the time, perhaps very slowly. Um, when we discussed this before, we were talking about uh, an, an aircraft over, um, over a flight, it will burn some fuel and this will change the mass of the aircraft, which will affect its input-output dynamics. Um, hopefully, we can design our controller in such a way that these changes um, will not have a big uh, impact on the performance of our system. Um, often, I mean, maybe this is getting a bit more philosophical, but you, would, you, you will only ever have a model of your process. You'll never know exactly what your process is. Uh, you'll just have some rough idea. And hopefully, we can do our control system design so that this doesn't actually matter. We don't need to know exactly what our process is in order to get the output to do what um, we want it to do. And th this is really a, a huge um, selling point of feedback, uh, is that good feedback design will give you performance that works even if the process isn't exactly what you think it is, which is good because you don't know exactly what it is. Um, so th this is another a, a key objective here, make the response insensitive to changes in the process. And then finally, we've already talked about it, is um, follow command, command signals, command signals. So this is the 
get the thing to do what you want it to do. I want this velocity. Hopefully, the output uh, velocity of the car will match the reference. Um, so this is sort of your your final objective, if you like. And this is sort of a a fairly high level uh, roadmap for. Uh, or a set of objectives for good control system design. So, what do the various bits normally, uh, who takes responsibility for what? Well, P, we're stuck with, I guess. Um, it's not completely true. Um, in a process, then maybe there are design choices there um, that, uh, that you should consider. So what types of sensors to use, for example, or how strong to make your actuators. And by really understanding the feedback process, you can, you can gain quite a lot of valuable insight into what those need to be. Um, but for the purposes today, this is what we're stuck with. Um, and what we're able to design is our controller and this feed forward compensator. And what do you typically use to do what? Uh, typically, you use the controller C of S to deal with objectives A, B, and C. And then you get this feed forward compensator F of S to sort of finish things off. So you, we use our feedback controller to really handle all of the uncertainty in the system. So we want to reduce the effect of uncertainty from load disturbances, reduce the effect of uncertainty from uh, measurement noise, reduce the effect of uncertainty in what the plant actually does, what the input out behavior of the plant actually is. So feedback is used to deal with all of the uncertainty in the system. And on that solid base, you then design your feed forward compensator to get um, good uh, reference tracking. It's not completely true. You would typically use integral action in your controller and that will help with the objective of tracking references. But um, so, so there is a little bit of element D built into the design of your controller um, C, but typically you're using feedback to deal with all of your uncertainty, and then you're shaping things at the end with your feed forward compensator so that you can um, get uh, your system to follow command signals in a desirable way. So at a very high level, these are all the design objectives. Um, we're going to be trying to understand these design objectives through a set of closed loop transfer functions. And with respect to A, B, and C, the uh, closed loop transfer functions that are important are uh, these ones. So I'll just write them all out. It's 1 over 1 plus PC, and then P over 1 plus PC, C over 1 plus PC and PC over 1 plus PC. So these are sometimes referred to as the gang of four. Um, not in China, I believe. Um, it's a little bit of a, a sensitive, uh, well, I, I guess that's the, the, the point of the name, uh, poking fun at that a little bit. Um, but anyway, we have this uh, set of four transfer functions. And what you'll notice is they correspond to various closed loop transfer functions in this feedback loop. And hopefully you're familiar with how to go about um, working out which transfer function corresponds to what. We're going to be talking about that in a lot more detail. Um, but the, your general rule is you notice all the denominators are the same. Um, and that's that you obtain from the loop gain, which is the product of everything in the feedback loop, um, except for this minus 1 and then plus 1. So this PC. If we had more blocks, uh, we'd just have more terms in here. So this is the loop gain. Uh, this is often called L. And then in the numerator, if we want to find out what signals map to what, you just have to insert um, the blocks that lie between the two signals in the feedback loop. So here, if we want to look at the closed loop transfer function from D to Y, well, P lies between D and Y. So P goes in the numerator, and then 1 plus PC in the denominator. If we want to look at the transfer function from n to y, well, now we've got minus 1 times c times p. So that doesn't actually appear here, but it's kind of covered by this one with a minus sign uh, in it. So this transfer function here, this is corresponding to the effect of your noise on your output. Um, and you can sort of 
match uh, various ones up to various input-output relationships in this picture. And the point is that these four cover all of the possible um, closed-loop transfer functions that you get in this part of the feedback loop here. So understanding these four is critical to understanding these three objectives. And I mean, right there, you have almost the most important design lesson that we're going to learn today is good feedback control system design requires you to look at all four of these closed loop transfer functions. It's never enough to just look at one or two. Um, and we'll sort of, we're going to be focusing in a lot on these two uh, today. They've got special names. This one here, this is called the sensitivity function and it's commonly denoted by uh, the letter S. I don't know if this uh, pen is going to work. So this is S, this is our sensitivity function. And this is T, this is our complementary sensitivity function. Um, but although we focus on these, you have to look at all uh, four and we'll try and see what they correspond to um, uh, in different parts of the lecture. If you then want to understand D, we have to introduce um, more transfer functions, uh, basically to understand the effect of this reference on the various internal signals in this feedback loop. And we get a few extra transfer functions here involving um, F and the, the key ones have been picked out in your lecture notes. Um, but there we have a very kind of big, big picture overview of control system design objectives. And now we're going to go away and uh, talk about A, B and C in more detail. Thank you.